Hey guys, this is Daniel Peckham, and this is my Bend It Like Peckham tutorial. Um, a lot of people have been asking about these photos I've been doing. Uh, it's not really my idea to start out with, but something that I've been pursuing a lot. Um, some people call them the Droneception pictures, because it's kind of like some of the effects in the Inception movie. Um, so if you look, look that up, I'll provide some hashtags and people to check out if you want to see other people's work. Um, also if you search on YouTube there are some other tutorials um, but this is just going to be um, how I do it and obviously there's multiple ways of doing it um, but here are some of the shots that I've done. Alright so let's talk about the basic concept here of what we're doing. Obviously we're using a drone here and let's just use this photo as an example. Um, as you can see, the foreground is at a lower length angle. Uh, and as you get farther back in the photo, it's more of a straight down angle. Actually, at the end, usually you're, you're shooting completely straight down. And you're also shooting from higher altitude as well. Um, and that's mostly because you have to get everything in the scene and so when you're thinking about shooting these um, the thing to think about is like what part of your scene looks better from a top-down view and what type what part of your scene looks better at a low angle so in this case with the with the pier I thought it'd be kinda cool to be looking down on the beach um, but the foreground be a lower angle kind of to exaggerate the shape of the pier um, so as you're th as you're thinking about shooting these, um, just think about that. And and actually, there's no reason you couldn't bend the other direction. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, in in all these examples, I'm bending a certain direction, but you could do it the other way. So um, another thing to think about is it usually works better if you have some sort of leading line. Uh, so that's obviously the pier here. Um, also, if there are things like people or cars to give a sense of scale, it's usually a little bit more exaggerated that way. Um, so that's a couple things to keep in mind. So with this particular shot, um, let me show you the original photos here. So here's the first one. It's pretty low. The next one. So you can see I, I started going higher and I tilted the camera down so that it was still focusing on the pier. And by this point, I started flying forward a bit as well. And then here it's almost straight down. And then my final shot here is actually this one, um, which is my straight down shot. Good morning. So, good morning. My phone is excited about this tutorial, obviously. So here's another thing that I did, which you don't necessarily have to do, but um, I find that the, the top-down shot especially, you need, um, you either need to fly really high, which you're not supposed to fly above 400 feet in most cases, um, or you can do a lateral panorama. And the reason is that um, depending on the, when your scene starts here, you kind of have to keep in mind of how wide of the scene here that you're going to want to capture when you're at the top down. So if you look here, like this is a pretty broad stretch of the beach um, going all the way over on the right hand side here to the that grassy area and then over here the parking lot. And what I've what I've run into sometimes is you, you end up shooting all these shots and then some of the shots aren't you're not getting as much of the scene so then you have to really crop it down so it's better to shoot more so you can see here with the top down shot I got the whole um, grassy area on the right and most of the most of the parking lot and I didn't actually get that in one shot I ended up shooting a bunch of photos that I made into a panorama here I'll show you um, and these are just I was facing the camera exactly straight down and then I just flew in a, in a grid pattern. Uh, again, if you flew higher, you could get this all in one shot, but um, I didn't want to fly higher than 400 feet because technically you're not supposed to. So anyway, I shot all those and in, in 
if you're using Lightroom, um, it's real easy. You can select them, you can do photo merge, and you can do panorama. And it will automatically stitch them. Uh, by the way, I usually use the perspective um, setting, but you can play with the different ones on the next screen. But what you end up with is this, and then I also brightened it up because my exposure was off a bit. Um, so that was my final top-down shot. Again, you don't have to do it that way. You could just shoot one top-down shot, but I wanted to make sure I got everything. So like this shot here was the one right before it and right before it, and just going back down just as a review. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is you want to keep your exposure consistent, the brightness of your photo, and also your white balance. Um, now if you're shooting raw, that's really easy to do because you can fix it after the fact. All right, so let's start out with a simpler one first for the editing here, and then we will work on this one. So let's look at something like this first. So this is actually only two images that I used, um, so it's, it's kind of easy on the editing side. So these are the two images. So there was this one, and then there's this top down. Um, so a couple things to do before you actually work on editing uh, would be just to make sure that your exposures and white balance are the same. Now I always shoot raw and I usually shoot in manual so that's not usually much of an issue. Um, but in Lightroom or whatever you're using um, just try to get the brightness the same between the two. And then uh, you know if you're using bright uh, Lightroom you can just sync your settings especially like white balance um, so once you have the two images matched as, as closely as you can I mean you can fix this later too but it's the, the more you fix it now the better um, the easiest way to do this is is select the images uh, in Lightroom so I, I just hit command and clicked on the second one or control on Windows uh, and then right click and we'll do edit in and then um, open as layers in Photoshop. So this tutorial I'm just going to assume you're using Lightroom in Photoshop. Um, you could obviously do this in other programs as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll wait for that to load. Alright, so now you see here in Photoshop we have both images as separate layers. So the way I like to work with it is I like to work with the lowest one first on top and then um, put the the ones that are higher top-down shots later. So the first thing, wow. basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be blending these. And um, the best way that I found is by using masks. So um, if you're not familiar with masks, you can look that up separately. But I'm going to add a mask here. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm only black and white here. And for the initial mask, I like to just use the gradient tool here. And in this case, I'm going to mask off this photo right at the line. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make it a little easier. Um, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag with the gradient tool. And what that did was it made a quick little mask like that. And I hold down the shift to, to make it a nice straight line. You can play with this and adjust it later of course. but so now you can see if I take away the background picture what I did was I just cut out the part of this picture I did not want to use. Um, so now we've got a couple issues. One is the image needs to be bigger overall which can fix that but then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the one below it and we need to move this to the right spot. So if I just hold down command and, and click and drag I can move it or you can use the move tool. So there's another issue we have here, as you can see, which is the images aren't exactly the same size and one needs to be rotated a little bit. So let's also expand out our workspace here um, because we're going to need more space. So let's use the crop tool and drag that up. Um, we don't need it to be a specific aspect ratio, so let me just clear that out. So let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. Um, you could also do this by uh, going to the image menu and increasing the canvas size. 
So let's go ahead and just do that for now. All right, so now I have a little bit more room. So um, I always like, I prefer to size an image down rather than resize one up because then you're not gonna lose quality. So I'm gonna go, so this top one is too big. So I'm gonna select that here, Command T or Control T for transform. I'm gonna hold down Shift as I drag from an edge. That keeps the same aspect ratio. And I'm just gonna kinda line it up and keep tweaking it until it lines up there. And you can also use the arrow keys for precise movement. Okay, we're really close here. Let's do a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. So you can see here, actually, we've, we're almost, we've almost got it, basically. Um, in this case, uh, the blending is super simple. Um, obviously, you crop some stuff out. But um, the cool thing is that because we used a mask, we can go in here and we can smooth out some of these transitions. So with the mask selected, and I'm gonna switch to the brush, pressing B, and um, we're gonna be painting with either white or black to tweak this mask. And um, the opacity up here, uh, you might wanna start out maybe at like 50%. If you just press five, it goes to 50%. Um, and then you can just kinda of play around with it. So, um, and then you can use the bracket keys to change the size of your brush here. So I'm gonna just try with white first and just see what does that look like. Okay, that, yeah. let me try this again. I'm gonna undo. Let me hit, if you hit X, it switches colors over here. So now I'm painting with black instead. And I kinda like blending it that direction a little bit better. And all what you're doing here is, if I pull this up here, if you alt click on the mask, you can see here I was adding a little bit of a, a smooth transition here. Um, so this is all working with masks, which uh, if you're not familiar with that, it might take you a little bit getting used to, but the cool thing is all of this is non-destructive. Any, at any point I can disable the mask and then I've got the full image. That's, that's holding down shift and clicking on the mask. Um, I'll bring that back. But the nice thing is you can go back here and you can smoothen things out. Now there's that odd thing there that we're gonna have to fix later, but um, for right now, I'm just doing kind of a rough thing, but you can see um, in the history, if I go back, see we had we had a pretty harsh transition there. Now it's smoothed out more. There's, there's more you could do with that. Um, again, on the other side as well, um, let me make sure I'm on the mask still, or with the brush, and just smooth that out a little bit, which is basically I'm painting with a brush of opacity 50%, painting either black or white. Um, sometimes you just have to kind of experiment and see what works best. Um, you can see here, if you want to get really uh, careful, you can try to fix this. So I'm gonna paint in a little bit right to there so it matches up better. Let's try this one. Uh, I don't like that direction, so I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna hit X to switch to black, and I'm going to paint it that direction. So there's other ways of cleaning this up, clone stamp, um, other things like that. Um, but I try to do as much as I can with the original images because then you're bringing in uh, real data. Um, so that's the basic idea. Obviously there's more cleanup you can do, um, but I think that's good enough for showing you this. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this one and let's look at a different one. All right, so now let's look at another example this one is relatively easy as well, um, but there's a little bit of complexity with the masking um, because I'm overlapping uh, my body here with the other one. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's the, here's the final shot. Um, so as you can see the foreground, there's a low angle. So that's actually from this photo, um, which was also from the drone. I just had it hovering behind me really close to the ground, to the sand. And here is the top-down shot that I used. So as you can see, you know, with this type of shot, when you're only doing two, um, it's a pretty dramatic shift in perspective because you don't have the in-between ones. Um, but I think in some cases it can be really cool. So again, let's, um, I mean, I guess before, before I edit these, 
I, I tried to get the exposure pretty similar. I mean, they're very different shots, as you can see. Um, and you can do some, some tweaking later, but try to match them up as best as you can in terms of the how bright it is, the exposure. So let's go ahead and select both of them. I'm going to hold, hold down Command and click on the second one. So I've got both of them selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say Edit In. And then I'm going to choose Open as Layers in Photoshop. It's just an easy way of getting both of those images into one Photoshop document. All right, so I have both images in here. I'm going to switch the layers around here because I, I like to put the, the lower down shot at the top. Um, so that's that one. The other one's below it. So first of all, I'm going to move this one down. So I'm just going to hold down Command and that brings up the Move tool or you can select it manually and I'm just going to drag it down here. Put it near the bottom. Okay, so we have that one. Behind it is the other one. So just like last time, we're going to add a mask here. And I'm going to zoom in slightly. And the thing with this is you, you want to look for kind of natural transition points. So for me, what I was thinking is that the area of dry sand is a pretty good transition point. So I'm going to choose the gradient tool here. And again, I'm, I'm painting in with a gradient of black and white. And I'm going to go ahead and cut myself off here, and then we're going to re-add it later. But just to get the initial mask, I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm just going to drag down slightly. And you can see here I did the exact opposite of what I wanted, I wanted to do. So let me do Undo. And I'm going to hit X to switch. So now white and black were switched. I'm going to do the same thing. And then that's more what I was looking for. So um, overall, I wanted the transition to be around there. Now, if I if I just turn off, I'll just turn off the background just so you can see what's going on here. So this mask, anything that's black is masked out and not shown. Anything that white is white shows through for the picture. So if I disable the mask, you see the whole thing. If I bring it back, you do that. Um, I can do Alt, click on the mask to see the mask if you want to see it bigger. Uh, I'll click again to bring it back. Now the thing is here, uh, I thought it looked kind of cool to have um, myself sticking through to the other image. So what you can do here is, I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to go back to the brush tool, B, and I'm going to paint in with white to bring myself back into the scene. So I'm going to go like that. I'm at 70% opacity, I think maybe, let me switch over to like 80 and I'm just going to do a rough painting in. Now there's other ways of doing this selection. Um, there's lots of ways of doing this, but I'm just going to do this for now just as a, a rough um, masking job. And we'll clean this up later. I mean, the nice thing is with masks, um, this is all non-destructive. We can change it at any time. So there I am. Now I'm standing here again. So let's zoom back out. Command minus. Okay, so now let's bring back in this. Now, there's a couple issues. Again, we've got the sizing issue. So the this this top one here, this one with me, needs to get smaller. It's it's just not the right perspective. Like if you if you uh, if I move it down, you can see like that's that's me standing there. You can see that it was a lot farther away. So I'm going to first. Um, resize this top one down. I'm just going to do Command T, and then I'm going to hold down Shift while bringing this down, and I'm going to move it up here so I can kind of see what I'm doing more. And I mean, part of this is just kind of how you decide you want to do it. Um, there's no right way of doing it, but I feel like it looks about right, kind of like that. And then I'm also, you can see, I'm moving it around to get it more in position. Um, so you can already start seeing what we're what we're going for here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So we're getting kind of close here. Obviously, we need to clean up that there. It looks bad. Um, the other thing that we need to do is is get a better transition because this this just looks really fake here. 
and they don't match up well the, these transitions here between the the sand so the nice thing is with with sand and something like something like sand or grass it's it's pretty easy to blend and it looks okay so I'm gonna go back here to our mask I'm gonna click on the mask and I'm gonna go to the brush tool again and let's try maybe like 50% opacity I'm gonna press the 5 and let's just do kind of some big strokes and let me just try I often just will pick either black or white and I'll just try a stroke to see if it's going in the right direction um, so that's kind of cool let me undo that I think maybe I'm gonna do more of like a 70% opacity or 80 to get more defined um, effect here and let me try again so you can see there it's starting to work pretty well and again what I'm doing is if you bring up the mask you can see here I'm I'm painting in some black but not at full opacity so I'm basically I'm just doing a nice a blend here there's other ways of doing this but this is the way I, I kind of like doing it so I'm gonna go back here and do it some more maybe now I'll switch down to 40 percent opacity basically I'm just trying to create a nice smooth edge there and it's already looking pretty good so let's do something similar on this side switch back to like 70 or 80 percent opacity by hitting 7 or again it's up here and let's start blending some more here okay that was probably too aggressive uh, I didn't mean to click on that okay so let's the nice thing is if you if you do too much you just switch to the other color uh, in this case back to white and then you paint some more and then it brings it back so at any point you can fix what you've done you're just switching between black and white and different opacities and I think that I'm gonna undo that I'm gonna switch back down to maybe 50 or 40 percent because I feel like every time I'm doing this it's it's doing too much of an effect um, but you can see here the, the other thing with the brush that I find helpful is if you paint from an edge of it so like right now I'm trying to affect the bottom part of the brush but I'm just painting right at the edges so it just feathers out and then I'm gonna switch to black and do the same thing from the other side so it's kind of kind of takes some getting used to but as you can see here if I zoom back out um, it's already blended pretty well there except for around me so um, the other thing you could do of course is there's other cleanup if you wanted to get rid of some of these footprints or other things and then there's of course there's overall image editing but for the blending um, there are other ways of cutting this out I mean there's you can use the pen tool and there's lots of smart selections and stuff you can do I tend to just use the brush but make it smaller so let me go back here make sure I'm on the mask okay and I'm gonna make my brush a lot smaller I'm gonna to go to maybe 70% opacity and let's see is this the right nope this is the wrong see if I'm doing that I'm bringing back the other one so I'm gonna undo that and that means I need to switch I'm gonna hit X and all that's doing right here is switching from black to white uh, you can also click this little arrow thing here um, so let me go in here and I'm gonna zoom in even more and we're just gonna go here and clean this up now this is just a little bit of a time-consuming process especially if you do it this way again I think there are better ways of doing this um, what I'm doing right now is I'm letting it bleed over onto myself and then I'm gonna to have to clean that up later so uh, you kinda of go back and forth at least the way I do it uh, so let me just brush around here a little bit more okay I'm being kinda of careless but whatever it doesn't matter because this is all non-destructive I can go fix it anytime because at any time I just go and switch back I'm just gonna hit X switching to the other color and now as I paint I'm painting myself back into the shot so you can see here I'll just do a nice small brush and you can see I'm painting myself back for the parts that I was careless and I went too far now if I switch over to the mask if I alt click on the mask you can start seeing the shape of me form here and that gives you kind of an idea of what's going on so again you just go through and you clean this up um, how, however you want to do this is fine but this is the basic idea the cool thing is once you have a nice mask in place which mine isn't really that nice yet but for sake of time I'll just keep it like this 
I zoom back out, um, you can actually play with this some, and we could click down to the bottom layer and do the move tool. I'm going to hold command, and you could move it around. So I kind of liked it with the water overlapping some. If you do it too much, then it, then you're going to really have to figure out how you're going to blend those. It's going to be a little hard. I liked it kind of like around there. Again, if you felt like I don't, don't really like the perspective, you could go back here and you could size this one down some more um, if you want if you want the person to look more I don't know bigger compared to the wave again this is where you just kinda play with it and do what you want and then and then of course later you crop out what you don't want so I think that basically gets you the idea of, of how that one is done so let's close that and move on to another one alright so let's move on to a complicated one so we are going to do this one here. So this is going to require a lot more masking, a lot more images. So just as a reminder, the images we had here were this one, this one. You can see we're getting higher with the camera tilted down more and also moving forward slightly and then the final one is this one here that I merged together from a what I call a lateral panorama a panorama from these images here and then I fixed the exposure which is why it's brighter here I tried to match that as best I could with the exposure of these other shots I also made sure the white balance was the same um, if you shoot JPEG, um, you can't really tweak the white balance as easily, but it's okay. Um, for the most part, the camera does a good job, plus you can always fix it later. So, um, let's select all of these. I'm going to shift click here, so I've got all those, and then the one final one here, I'm going to command click on this guy here. And again, we're going to right click and edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now you could also just manually open these and bring them in as layers. There's nothing magical about what I'm doing right now. All right, so we've got all our images in here as separate layers. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that they're in the order I like, which uh, again, usually at the top I like to put the lowest one, and then we've got the next one up, the next one, next one, if you select them in the same order in Lightroom before you do this, they're already in this order. Um, and then our last one here, the top down one, is kind of our real funky one, but we'll deal with that at the very end. So let's just look at the top one here. And I'm going to get rid of all the others. Um, another thing, again, we're going to have to make some more space here. You can do image canvas size, or you can go to the crop tool and just expand it up. Um, also, I'm going to just go ahead and expand it in. We're not going to. Oops. Undo. Okay, we'll just bring that in. Just we're not going to be using that much. All right, I'm just going to hit enter. So now we have a little bit more space here. Uh, I'm working with pretty big images here, and my computer isn't the fastest. So, all right. So let's select this top one. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the move tool here and I'm going to move it down so it's at our bottom bottom of our image and let me go over here sometimes if you don't have see how I have blue here in my color I'm gonna click this I want only black and white here because that's what I'm gonna be using for my masking and so let's add a mask like we did before click this add layer mask I'm gonna zoom in so I can do this a little bit easier and then as you're doing this you just have to kind of think about which sections of the photo make easy breaking points and so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to do our first mask so that this first shot is um, just the restaurant here on the pier the front part of the pier so let's click this I'm going to click my re uh, gradient tool and again I'm going to click right about here and I'm gonna drag down slightly holding down shift click drag shift hold down okay so that's pretty good actually uh, we'll clean this up later but 
If I enable the layer below it, you will now see the one below it. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to move it. And I'm going to move it up until it's right below that same spot. Now another thing you can do if you want is you can change the opacity of the layer above uh, to help with this alignment. Now you'll see the the, the poles here are messed up. Um, we're going to have to fix that later with some masking. Um, but now you can see here we have so if I turn off the mask here so you're only seeing the top shot this is the original shot but we cut it off so now we're looking at a slightly different angle for the one below it now we may end up see I'm moving this around and I can see it, it's not lining up exactly so again you may need to uh, adjust the size of the layer you may also need to use the warp command I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit I think this one's fine for now. So now, on this next one, since I have so many images here, I'm just going to use a small slice of each one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask. And again, just, to, just as a reminder, this image is this part here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to use this image for just this small section right here of the pier. Um, probably just about, let me clear off that uh, so you can see better what I'm saying. Um, like, I'm going to do a slice of this image all the way across about that big, uh, including the flag there. And there's something else we can do with the flag later, I'll show you. But again, I'm going to do the gradient tool, and I'm painting in on my mask. And I'm going to do it right about where I want the next break to be. So let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to click and drag down slightly with shift held not sure what happened there let me try this again there we go all right um, so now if you if I turn this one off and on you see this second image all it's doing is providing a slight little slice of the pier so let's go ahead and enable the one below it and let's move it into position. So I'm going to use the move tool again and we're going to move it up to where it matches. Now see if you go this far obviously that doesn't make sense. Um, sometimes you can find elements in the picture that line up. You see that yellow thing? That's a nice marker so I know that it should line up about there. Now again you can see that the, the size is slightly off. Uh, the size of the two images here one's a little smaller than the other. We can use a warp tool to fix that. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that yet at this point. I'm just kind of wanting to give you a general overview. So again, if we start at the top, well, let me let me take off this one. So this is the one we just added. So this image, the top image, is just that part. The second image is just this slice here. Okay, and then the next one down we haven't sliced it up yet, but it's providing the next little section there. So let's go ahead and add a layer mask here. And so again, if I turn this off, back on, let's do a similar amount of slice. So maybe let's slice it right below this spot here. Again, with the gradient, I'm going to click and drag down. And again, all that's doing is it's just making black on top and white down below with a slight slight um, gradation there so that it's it's kind of a nice transition so let's enable the one below it now and as you can see again we need to move this guy so I'm going to click on it the move tool and let's move it up 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 and okay so let's see here there is that little cart in the guy that's about where I cut it uh, I mean, you don't have to match it exactly. Like, if you wanted to just go for an extreme effect, you could move it and then size things. But it's easier if, if it's about the same spot so you don't have repeated sections. So, again, also you can see, obviously, like, the ocean looks different from different angles. And this is especially an issue when it's bright out and it's the middle, it's kind of the, close to the middle of the day. We can smooth that out later with the mask. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, yet. 
So let's see here. Um, one thing to keep in mind is just you have to kind of think about all the rest of the images you have. So I'm going to turn all these guys off that we've worked with so far and let's just look at the next ones we have. So we have this one, we have this one um, here, and then we have the very top down one. So we only have three more left until we get to top down. Um, the top down looks to me like the best transition point would be to have that one come in right before the sand so that this top down one um, will be basically from about like here upward. Let me undo that. It's going to do a mask on that which is not what I wanted. And this next one that can probably be this section between these two and this other one can be leading up to that. So how you, where you slice these is up to you. I mean, it, it affects like how fast the bend happens. So you can play around with it. Also, I feel like a big factor is just the elements in the photo and um, where the natural breaking points are. So I'm gonna add a mask here on this one. And so again, this one is this shot here let's have this one go all the way up until right before this spot in the pier where it goes out so again with the gradient selected I'm going to click and go down like that okay so that's about where I wanted it um, maybe a little lower let me do it one more time um, let's try a little lower I think that's going to be better. Okay, so now with this one below it, obviously it really needs to be moved. It's way off. So let's move it up, 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 up to about there. Okay, again, we're going to have to fix some of the sizing of these, but you're, you're starting to see the effect here. So the next breaking point, I think, well, let's look at this. If you alt click on the eye of an of a layer you only see that layer so let's look at this one I'm only viewing this one and let me turn that off again I think that this one so this this last one went to here I think our next break break point should be somewhere before the next spot where the pier goes wide here so these are nice uh, breaking points. So let's go down here. We added the mask and let me click and drag right about here. Okay, so that cuts that off there. Let's go down to this one. We're going to move this one up. Okay, so we're going to have this one connect in. Oh, you see there's that, that white little thing. That's kind of a nice little marker for us. Um, again, the sizing is off, so we're going to have to tweak that. Um, but we can use the warp tool or transform tool to fix that. So now let's zoom out. See, now we're starting to get the effect here. And we just have one more remaining, which is the straight down, top down shot. So let's zoom back in here. And what I'm going to do is add the mask again. And let's make this transition point right before the waves. So I'm going to do it right here. So again, this is the gradient tool. I'm going to hold down shift while I click and drag down slightly. And that cuts it off there. And so now let's zoom out here and let's move up our top down shot. Okay, we keep moving it up, 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 up. Okay, so somewhere around here. Now, the top down shot because it was a panorama with multiple images is a much higher resolution so it's it's quite a bit too big so that one I'm gonna fix right up front so let's do command T or control T for the transform and grab an edge and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm just gonna size it down some I don't know how much and then I'm gonna move it back and then see how it lines up um, so let's see what this is looking like this is pretty good actually um, I'm going to want it to transition about there. I'd say that's pretty good. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, let me just zoom out here so you can see what we did. 
So we have the basics of it done, but it needs a lot of cleanup. So just to back up, so we have this guy is giving us just the, the restaurant on the pier. This guy is doing it, this small little section right there. Anyway, I won't go through it all. You, you were following me along the whole time. So now um, the main thing to clean up first is to make sure that these transitions to the pier um, line up. So let's go back down here and start from the top down. So this first one is fine, I, I would say. Now there's there's the issue of the poles, but we'll deal with that later. Um, what I'm concerned about right now is the transition with the pier here. So let's see this one. So this one, if you're not sure which one it is, you can just turn off on the visibility like I was doing, or you can try moving it. So I'm just doing command and clicking and dragging, or you can choose the move tool up here. Um, what I'm seeing here is it seems like this one needs to be a bit bigger uh, At least the transition right there So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to do command T for transform and then I'm going to right click Actually, let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay Right click and I'm going to choose warp and This is lets you tweak just the edges In a certain way, so it's going to be hard for you to see here, but if I pull this edge out it's very slight, but what it's doing is it's bending out just the front, or just the bottom, I should say, of the picture. And you can see here it's lined up pretty well now. Um, let me zoom back out, and let me pull this one out just a little bit more. Also, it's, it's, it's adding a slight curvature, um, which is going to look good. Now, the other th part is we have to think about the the other transition over here and so that one needs to be kind of skewed inward so I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull it in you see how it's lining up better right there so there are other ways of doing this of course um, this is just the way I like to do it um, I'm sure there's many people out there who know better ways and who are even better at the warp tool than I am but this is how I do it now if you notice I'm fixing that side and then the other side came back so I'm going to have to pull that one in you can also you can try that moving this in you just have to kind of play with it I actually don't like that effect so I'm gonna instead move this one in so this is kind of time-consuming um, ah and I'm running out of space cool okay well that's what you would do um, and you can see here this is the one we just worked on it's a lot better now um, if I undo the free transform, you can see right there. So that's what you're going to do all the way down the line. So here's the next one. Um, you can sometimes it's just a matter of moving it to the right spot. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of just sizing it correctly. Um, but that's what you need to do all the way down. Now here you can see there's there's a dramatic shift here. So it's going to require some work. Um, that's why doing something like this with a pier versus just sand is a lot harder. So I'm, I'm not going to go through all of that right now because I think you probably get the idea. But the other thing I will go over is, is blending this water because again that's, that's with the masking and it's not as hard as it looks. So let's go here and let's look at this one. Um, actually the, this transition here seems about one of the worst. So we're going to select that, we're going to click here. I'm going to zoom in, and again, just like before we did with the sand, I'm going to go to the brush tool, and I'm going to choose like maybe, yeah, 70% opacity seems pretty good. And let's just try painting in like that. Um, okay, so that's kind of the direction I want to go. Let me undo that, and let me zoom out a bit, and let's do maybe opacity 50, and a bigger brush, and let's just kind of go like that. Now there's still kind of a transition here. So let's do that. Brush a little bit more. Like that. Now you have to be careful. So you can see right now I just brought in part of the other one, part of the pier. So I'm going to undo that. When you get in closer to the pier, you're going to have to be 
careful and you're probably going to have to use a smaller or lower opacity. Um, let me zoom back out here and let's do maybe 50%. Let's do along here. And basically you're going to do this kind of thing to each layer. So let's look at now. So now, now we have this transition here that's not so great. So let's click that layer mask and let's do something similar here. And again, if it doesn't look as good one way, you could try switching and blending it the other direction by hitting X. Uh, which would be painting in black instead of white, or white instead of black, vice versa. Uh, already just that amount did quite a bit, uh, if we zoom back out. Um, so it's already looking pretty good, um, but obviously we have this issue right up here, which is the worst part. So let's look at that as well. So I had a brief uh, interruption. My eight-year-old came over wondering what I was doing. And now we're back. So uh, I was just going to show you how to blend this last one. It's the same way as all the others. Um, I'm going to do the brush tool and uh, try maybe 50% opacity. And let's try with white first, brushing in with white. Uh, I don't like that direction, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to hit X. I'm going to try with black. Let's see how that works. Yeah, I think it's going to work better to transition it that way. Um, some of this is just experimenting. And the cool thing is you're never doing anything destructive because you can always just paint the other color back in if you decide to change your mind. So that's the great thing about using these masks. Uh, again, you have to be more careful around near the transition point with the pier. Uh, so I think you get the idea here. Um, a couple other things you'll need to fix, of course, is like things that stick up between or higher than the transition between layers. Uh, so like like right over here we've got this pole so I mean you could fix this like using clone stamp or something like that but I try to fix as much as I can using the source material so the issue here was like we had this layer and then we had this one and so what I would do is I would first see if it makes sense to bring in uh, from the original one here to bring in the pull all the way. So let me just go in, the, so I'm on the mask again for that one. Um, I'm gonna try painting with, I believe I need to do, do white. Let me see, Let's see if this does the right, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna paint in with white and I'm gonna bring up, basically I'm bringing in the pull from the top shot. Now you can see there's, doesn't quite match up, plus we've still got the other phantom pull here. And so we could, then switch back to the other color and paint that away. Oops, wrong color. Okay, paint that away. Um, like, you can see here the water doesn't look natural there, so we're gonna have to fix that. There's other ways of doing this. Um, it it kind of depends on how crazy you wanna get. You could just even cut off the pole completely, <laughs> which with using content aware fill would probably be pretty easy to do. Um, the other thing I did on mine was I kind of liked the flag from this one. I liked the flag showing up more. So I actually went in here and I painted up here and I brought in the flag from the lower shot like that. And I painted out the flag from the other shot. Um, because I liked that flag better. So those are other things you can do. You just have to play around with the masks. Um, this is a real rough version, obviously, but that gets you the general idea. So again, um, just a recap, you're merging photos in Photoshop. Um, if you want it to bend this way, you're starting low, going higher. Uh, you could bend the other direction. I haven't really tried that yet. Um, but I think that would be a fun way to do it. I would love for you to let me know if you have questions in the comments or on Instagram. Um, also, tag your shots with either hashtag Droneception or bend it like Peckham. And I would love to see the shots you do um, because I'm always experimenting and getting inspiration from other people. Um, these are all shots that I did that were inspired by other people 
and then some of the ones I've done were just kind of random ideas I had like this one here um, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to explore uh, this one uh, this is another fun thing you can do just as a side note with the top-down shots um, I merged a couple different ones I just left the drone hovering and I did some different poses uh, so that was kind of fun um, lots of fun things you could do so um, yeah thanks for watching